Okay, uh, several hours later, it's uh, now 4 p.m. in the afternoon. We're going to do a lot of things today. Um, back to turnover. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, check in a program to our development environment out of UAT and we're going to make some source code changes to it, we're going to compile it and we're going to re-promote it back up to UAT. Um, here we are looking at the empty programmer work list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an item. So if I press F6, it says right, which what is the program that I want to add into my work list? In my case, I know that the program is called Web Post Put, and it's an RPG LE program. Um, I also want to check it out. So this will tell me, this will add it onto the work list straight away, um, and it will check it out. It will reserve it for me to work on. And if somebody is already working on this program, if they have checked it out, it will tell me that you know, programmer Fred Bloggs is working on it. So I just press Enter. Great, it's added it to the work list with no error messages. I can see that the checkout form says yes to me. So I think I'm good to go. So when I'm looking at these objects, I, you, the first thing you might look at when you see this, this screen, it's a bit strange because the program I just added to the work list is appearing twice. And that's because it's two um, what turnover calls levels. The first level is my UAT level. Um, what it tells me is here's the program name, web PST put. It's an RPG LE program, and it's in a library called AHP Mods. This is my UAT library, my user acceptance test library. The next three columns quite clearly tell me there's an object there, yes, a source code there, yes, and it's checked out, yes, it's checked out to me. Um, the level below says web post put in my development library. There's no compiled object. Uh, the source does exist there, and that isn't checked out. You don't check out a development level. You could check out a development level if you wanted to have multiple developers working on it, um, but that's not the way that it sets up by default. A uh, quick note for you guys out there, if you're working in an environment with multiple levels, here I, this is a development machine and I just have a development layer and a, a test layer. Lots of sites have development test a QA environment, then a user acceptance test environment, then even a production environment set up on that machine. So this one program, you might see several lines. You'll always see one line for each environment. You can use the filters option on here, which I think is Shift F5, um, where you can say, look, I only want to see my development level. You'll only see one line. Um, or you could say Shift F5, I only want to see the production level. Uh, for this example, I'm going to leave all of the filters off so that we see everything. So all we care about is, hey, we've got the program here. Um, there's a whole bunch of options on the screen. Uh, uh, F23, <coughs> Shift F11 will scroll through all of the options. Um, you'll notice that all of the option numbers beginning with 40 are the form options. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, forms are the uh, instruments that we use to promote programs between these levels. So I compile and work on a program in my library. Uh, I compile it through the programmer work list just like I would using PDM. Um, when I'm happy with it and I want to push it up to the next level for testing, uh, I add it onto what's called a form. A uh, form can have lots of objects. So let's say that I had several programs, a display file, a print file, some physical files, some SQL stuff. I add them onto that form and then I run the form. You'll notice there's all these options here saying run form, view form. When those objects are on a form, the form will always sequence itself correctly. So for example, it will make sure that files will go up first, then logical files, then display files, then print files, then programs, so that everything compiles in the right sequence. Um, but I'll talk about that, um, make a little separate form um, video in a second. So for this example, hey, I've got this program checked out to me and I'm going to make some source code changes to it. Uh, again, if I just go through my options to the ones, the second screen of options, you'll see there's loads of options up here I'm just not even going to talk about. All I care about is editing source and compiling it. So 35 lets me view the source. If I do a 35 on the UAT level, I'm viewing the source code You'll notice straight away it shows me this is the source code in my UAT library, in this case AHP Mods QRPGLE source. If I do it on my library, here it is in my library. So I'm going to make a change to this in my library. So I'm going to use 32 to edit the source in my library. Here I am editing the source. 
just for this case let's quick add a little comment in here quickly it's uh, the 12th of August that's me um, you notice that I've already got some previous comments because this code is being worked on by another developer um, each time that I was asked to publish it for him up to UAT I just put a comment in the header with no code changes to say that I'm republishing with turnover for change management sync now I know that the version of the this code is in his library so in this case I'm going to delete all of the code so all I've left in here is my header with my comments to say that I'm doing something I'm going to go and grab the code from his library look at these are his comments here after NJL04 this is actually a completely different version of the code that he's working with here Bit of, this is one of, the, one of the reasons I'm putting this into turnover. Um, so I'm going to copy everything and then just give it a quick health check to make sure that it works okay. So we can see that his uh, commenting style is slightly different to mine. Um, so uh, hey, I'll, I'll leave it like that. It's, it's obvious to anyone if they look at the code exactly what's going on anyway. Uh, you can see that I've done a bunch of, of uh, publications. I added a return message of put away fails then uh, JD has done a validate all the lot overrides then he's done blah 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 so here's the rest of the code it's the old style F and D specs before free format and the RPG source itself is, is pretty much you know, is a mixture of uh, free format RPG and column based RPG as well deep joy um, if I had time on my hands I would run a convert on the column base to switch it to free format but I'm not going to so here's my code I'm just going to uh, think to myself that looks okay and it does so let's come out of this um, I noticed the comment on the source member says August the 10th it's August the 12th today so I'm going to update that so when I look at the compiled object I know it's me and that is me updated in my library um, I'm going to do a 14 to compile it. If turnover has specific compilation parameters that you have to put on there, it will prompt it on the screen there. And it's quite cool because it will say, you know, last time this was compiled, it had these parameters added to it. So if you're doing print files, for example, um, that have specific forms details, it remembers and prompts them for you. After it's submitted to compile, this is the column you want to look for, the object column here. When I press an F5 to refresh, there you go. Notice that it now shows there's an object compiled into my library. So hey, I know that that library with the version of source that I've been asked to push up has now compiled successfully into my library. So great. Now all I want to do is promote this up to the UAT. And with that, I'm going to add it to a form. To add it to a form, I can press Shift F11 to look at all of my commands, even though I know that the one that I want to enter is add to form so I'm going to do an add to form for this program it tells me very quickly that it's created a form called 11145 and it's ready to promote um, and I'm going to do that in a separate video so there